Heather Briggs and I am the pattern designer for My Sew so Quilty Life and today we're going to be making a couple blocks from the sunflower stand pattern. This will be a three-part series. Part one we'll be making the sunflower block, part two we will be making the stem and leaf blocks, and part three I'm going to be showing you how to put it all together in a crib size quilt. The crib size quilt is an additional settings PDF which is available to download on my blog. In order to make the blocks from both the crib size quilt and the full size quilt, you will need the pattern. This pattern is available in PDF or paper versions on my website at mysoquiltylife.com. Okay, let's go ahead and get started making the sunflower block. For my sample quilt in the pattern, I made it using Buttercup and Slate by Cory Yoder from Moda Fabrics. But for this tutorial, I wanted to show you how you can use scrap fabric or different fabrics to make the block and it still looks just as cute. Okay, for this block, you will need two fabric A, eight fabric B, and 48 fabric C. This is of your background fabric. You will also need for the sunflower petals, 24 fabric D. I decided to go ahead and use a bunch of different 1930s reproduction prints. I think this is gonna be so cute. And I wanted to show you how you can use scrap fabrics or just a variety of fabrics. You don't have to use all from the same collection. So you will need 24 fabric D. You will also need four fabric E and one fabric F. Now this is your flower center. Okay, let's get started with step one. So step one, you're gonna be drawing a diagonal line on the back of fabric A, C, and E. So on fabric A, C, and E, right here. Now, I have diagonal seam tape by Cluck Cluck Sew on my machine, so I actually don't draw this diagonal line anymore, but if you need to draw your diagonal line, you will do this in step one. I will go ahead and show you here. So on the back of fabric E, I am just drawing a diagonal line on the backs of each of my fabrics. I use any ruler, but I love to use this friction marker. That way when heat is applied to it by my iron, it does disappear. I like to use this marker instead of a mechanical pencil because I feel like a mechanical pencil pulls the fabric um, when I'm trying to draw the line in order to see it. So I like to use this marker. So you're gonna go ahead and draw a diagonal line on the back of all fabrics. A C and E if you do not have diagonal seam tape or some seam so easy guide. Okay, once you have drawn a diagonal line on all your pieces, you're going to go on to step two. Now for step two, you do need fabric F. This is your flower center. So I chose a yellow 1930s reproduction print. You're then going to go ahead and place your fabric E squares on the corners of fabric F. Now you're gonna take it over to the machine and you're gonna stitch on your diagonal line. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and stitched on my diagonal line. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut a quarter inch away from our seam on all four sides. So I like to use my Creative Grids ruler because on this side it has a dashed line. So I line my dashed line up with my diagonal sewn seam and I cut here on all four sides. Okay, now we need to go ahead and press. You're gonna press towards your fabric E and like this and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and pressed towards fabric E, you can see on the back. Now you're going to square up according to the pattern instructions. On each of the steps in the pattern, I do tell you what this unit and each of the units are supposed to measure after you have sewn and pressed. 
Okay, for step three, we're gonna go ahead and set aside the center unit. We're going to need our fabric D and fabric C squares. For step three, we're gonna go ahead with our fabric C squares and place each one on the top right corner of fabric D. We're then going to sew on our diagonal line. I'm gonna do that and I will be right back. Okay, I went ahead and assembled the first fabric C square to fabric D rectangle. Now you're gonna cut a quarter inch away from your sewn seam and you're gonna press. Now you're gonna press this one out towards fabric C like that. Okay, I just pressed that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to with the right sides together, place this fabric C on the top left of fabric D. We're then going to stitch on our diagonal line. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I just assembled this fabric C to the left side of my fabric D. I'm going to then trim a quarter inch away from the seam and then I'm going to press. Now for this one, we're going to be pressing towards fabric D instead of pressing out. This is so that the, um, the units will nest when we sew three together, which we will do in the next step. Okay, I went ahead and pressed towards fabric D. Now you'll see in the back how these are pressed in opposite directions. Again, this will help in step four when we sew three of these together that they nest and you can line up them perfectly so that they do nest. Okay, so now you're gonna do this to the remaining 23 petals, fabric Ds. You're gonna do the same exact thing. And then once we have that, we'll move on to step four. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble all of my fabric C to my fabric Ds the same way I did this one and I will be back. Okay, I just got back from pressing and sewing all 24, well, 23 more petals. So now is the fun part. We're going to lay it all out and decide. If you're making it with one fabric, you don't have to do this next part, but if you are making it scrappy and you kind of want to make sure that there's some, you know, some sort of order in there, you might want to go ahead and start picking which petals will go next to each other. So I'm going to do that really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a design board and I'll move these out of the way first. I like to use design boards when I'm sewing so that I can go back and forth from my sewing table to the iron to the cutting table and not have to worry about um, mixing up things and making a mess. So I use a design board. This one I made, it's just with batting hot glue to a uh, poster foam core board. Super simple. It, it's held up pretty well. It does have a lot of strings on it, so it's kind of a little crazy. So what I'm going to do first is just go ahead and lay out my center unit because I want to make sure that I'm not putting the same color next to these corners here. So you're going to go ahead and lay out three in a column. So I'm just going to kind of do something like this for a variety. That one would look good there. Maybe this one up here. Um, and then you also need to make sure you put some in the corners. So three go in the corners. Just trying to make sure I do a good variety of color placement here. Let's see, maybe some blue here. Maybe this one would go in the corner. Maybe, let's see, maybe that one here. This green, since I already have a green there, I'll put him here. Let's see, I already have a blue. Hmm, might change that over. That one, let's do some pink here. Orange, I have orange here, so maybe orange up here. And another blue. I picked a lot of blues for this quilt. I might go ahead and put, hmm, I don't know, I kind of like that one. Maybe blue, Ooh, I don't know, guys. Um, We'll stick him here for now. This purple, another pink, who am I missing? You can go there, you can go there, and then a red. So I wanna make sure my reds are kind of spaced out. So actually, let's do this. So I think that kind of looks pretty good. Now, if you don't love it, this is probably the time where you could start to figure out which one you should replace with another. Um, I kind of think this looks 
pretty decent. I'm not gonna spend too much time after all. I kind of want it to look a little scrappy and unintentional. But I like to do this so that when I do start sewing the three fabric Ds together, that they all stay in the same place and I know exactly where they go. Sometimes I'll even take a picture of this just in case I get it a little mixed up that it's easier to put back. So now what I'm gonna do is move on to step four. We're gonna be assembling three units together. So I'm gonna take just this top one first. What we're gonna be doing is nesting our seams. So because we um, press in opposite directions, we should be able to get a good point right there. Our seams should align. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of wiggling this until it kind of locks in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew on a quarter inch seam. I'm going to press it open and then I'm going to attach this one after I've pressed open to this side doing the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I just got back from sewing, assembling those together and pressing. So like I said, the reason why we press in opposite directions is so that we could nest our seams so they could line up pretty good, if you can see that there and there. And then when we assembled those, we then pressed open, and then you go ahead and square up to your measurement in the pattern. So there we have one unit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do this for all the units, and I will take this design board over to my sewing machine and just do one by one and lay them out. I won't press, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stitch this assemble these two, I won't press, and I will go ahead and open that up and assemble this. And then after I've assembled that, I will just lay this there, not pressed yet. And then I will go ahead and do this for all of them. This kind of saves you a little bit of time, and it also keeps your petals organized so that they're not getting out of order. And then I will just take my design board over to my pressing station and press it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I went ahead and assembled each of the 3D units to make a petal unit. So one of these is a petal unit. Now I ironed or pressed open and went ahead and trimmed up any excess that I had. Now the things you want to pay attention to when trimming is that you're keeping your quarter inch seam at the top so that when you sew it into the quilt it won't cut off your points. And then you want to make sure that the center of your ruler is aligned, so everything aligns perfectly. Now, if you have a little bit of excess left over after, or when you're in the middle of squaring it up or trimming it up, that is okay, because these actually don't have to align with another, um, with another unit. So this is just gonna be part of your background. So it's okay if you had to cut off a little more than you thought you would. Okay, so now it is on to step five. This is probably my favorite part of this pattern. I love doing fun, different techniques in the corners of my flowers. I think it really adds something special and different. So this is going to be fun. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your corners. So these ones in the corner, you're gonna take one of your corner units, or one of your petal units. And what you're going to do is you're going to attach fabric B, line it up with the top. You're gonna to attach fabric B to the sides with a quarter inch seam. And then what we're gonna do is press towards fabric B. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, now you're gonna go ahead and do this for each of the petal units that you selected to be in the corners. And then we are going to move on to step six. Okay, I went ahead and did assembled fabric B to all of the petal units that I'm going to have in the corner. So now what we're going to do is move on to step six. And for step six, you will need your fabric A squares. Now you should have already drawn a diagonal line on these in step one, but um, I didn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut on the diagonal. So you're going to cut on your diagonal line. Now you are cutting this on the bias, so you do need to be careful that you do not stretch these because um, you're gonna need them to keep their shape for this block. So you wanna make sure that you're gentle when handling these, okay? So the next part of this step is we're going to take one of our corner petal units and we're gonna align the middle of this unit or the middle of fabric A with the middle of this unit. Now the easiest way that I like to do it is I will just put a crease 
like this. Just put a little crease there in both of my units. Now the middle of this unit really should be that tip right there. So you can just align it with that tip right there. And this should also align in the center. Now, if it doesn't align perfectly, like this is probably a little bit off, that's totally fine. What I really want to line up is the top here. So when I stitch my quarter inch seam, I can flip this up. I'm not really worried about how it looks here because I can, I can um, fix that later when I trim this down. So what I'm going to do is just put a couple pins so this doesn't move. And I'm gonna do this for all four of the units. And you're going to, again, assemble a quarter inch seam right here. And I'm gonna do that and on all of them and I will be right back. Okay, I now have assembled my fabric A squares that are now triangles onto my corner petal units. You are now going to take this and you're going to press this towards fabric A like this. So I'm gonna do that for each of them and I will be right back. Okay, I have pressed all of my corner petal units. Now we're gonna move on to step seven. This is the fun part. I love this part. Don't these look funny? Well, we're gonna turn those into something cool. So what I do recommend is that you do have a square ruler that has a diagonal line, a 45 degree diagonal line. Now it does need to be at least five inches or larger in order to do this. So I have a six and a half and a 10 and a half, 10 and a half inch ruler. I'm gonna go ahead and use the six and a half. Now I could use this, but I'm gonna use this one to show you. So for this step, I have a diagram in the pattern and it may look a little confusing, but it's actually super simple. So what you're gonna do is working with the ruler right side up. So your one inches, your two inches need to be aligning up, not, not like this, not like this. So you need to make sure that your ruler is facing up that way so your your lower numbers towards the top so what I'm going to do first is I'm aligning the diagonal line on the ruler with the center of my unit the next thing I'm going to do is align the one inch line so we got it on both sides so that's one inch from the edge of the ruler and that's one inch so what we need to do is align that one inch line with the edge of my seam so right there is that one and it looks like this one's right here. While doing that, you need to make sure that your diagonal line on your ruler is aligned up with that point and still centered on fabric D in the middle of the petal unit. Now, as you can see here, I have centered it right here and here are fine, but here it's a little off, but that's totally okay. You might have a little extra there or you might have um, not enough, it's totally fine. As long as it's around one inch, it'll work. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and trim this to five inches. Now, if you're a little intimidated to go ahead and cut this unit, you could go ahead and with um, your friction pen or, or pencil, you could draw a line here and here like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it. So I know that this unit has to be five inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut here like this and here. Now, if you have a rotating cutting mat, it might be easier for you, but I don't. So I just make do with what I have. Okay, so we went ahead and cut that excess off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it like this and we're going to measure that this is five inches. Again, make sure that your diagonal line is centered and going through the middle petal unit right there. And what we're going to do is now we're going to cut. Again, you could mark just to make sure, but you're going to cut like that. So now we have a corner petal unit. You're gonna go ahead and do that same step for the remaining three. And you see how that works just right there starting to look great. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the remaining three and then I will be right back. Again, what you're going to do is with your ruler, one, lower numbers facing up, you're gonna align 
the center line with the center of the middle petal unit. You're then going to pull down until you have reached the one inch increment on your seam. So for this one, I need to shift down just a little. So you see how that does, if I do it one inch and one inch, that does make it kind of wrong, kind of diagonal, not straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how you can make this work. The most important thing is that your center line, your center diagonal line is in the center of this unit. So that is the first thing I'm going to do is make sure it's in the center, okay? Now then I'm gonna see if I can get one line, one of the sides to line up at one inch. So this one does, and this one's off just a little. So what I'm going to do is I might kind of wiggle it a little more to see if I can get it a little more straight. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm not gonna worry that that's not an inch. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and cut it. It is just fine that it is not a full or it's a little over an inch, it's just fine. You won't even notice that when you put the block together. Now you don't want it to be an inch and a half or two inches or not enough, like an, a half an inch. You do want it to be close enough to the inch. So you can't even tell that that's not a true inch right there and when it's in the block, you will have no idea. So I hope that helps a little bit if you are struggling to make these because you're not getting that perfect inch. I didn't get the perfect inch and it's gonna be just fine. Okay, I went ahead and finished trimming up the remaining corner petal units according to the diagram in the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to step eight. This is the last step and we're gonna be putting this beautiful block together. I love how it's looking. I think it is super cute with these 30 prints. It looks scrappy and it really does kind of look like a dressed in plate block. So I really think that is so cool. So what you're gonna do first is you're going to assemble the corner petal units to your petal units and you're going to assemble your petal units to your center unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam on each side and I will be right back. Okay, I went ahead and assembled these units so far. So now I want to go over the pressing instructions. So for this seam, you're gonna be pressing towards your petal unit. Again, this seam, you're gonna be pet a pressing towards your petal unit and this one towards your petal unit. This is when we go ahead and sew the last two seams together that each of these sections nests nice. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the last units together. So I'm gonna do that. I will press and I will be right back for the final steps. Okay, so now we just have two more seams and our block is completely finished. So what we're gonna go ahead and do first is lay this one here. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the design board and we're gonna pin at our seams. What we're gonna do is we're gonna nest these seams. So what I like to do is I like to just kind of put a tug on it till it locks in there. So those are both locked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin at that seam, make sure all these are, are straight first before I pin. So I'm just pinning up the seam. I pin this way, but you can pin however you would like. Okay, so that's good. So now let me think, let me get this seam. There we go, that one is nested. So I'm just putting in my pins. Now something that I like to do, and I explain this on other videos I do, is I like to stitch at my seams first this way, I know that these are nesting and stitched properly and aligning properly. So when I open it up, I'm not surprised when I have a bunch of fabric that has shifted down if I were to start up here. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch those seams first. And then I usually will just go back and fill in. Okay, I went ahead and stitched on my seams first. So I wanted to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So now when I open it up, these are gonna nest. I do that, so let's just say there was a little bit of excess fabric here, then I can stretch it 
in order for it just stretch it a little bit in order for it to align and I'm not having to worry about my seams not lining up after the whole thing has been stitched so now what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to go ahead and sew all the way down sometimes I'll start here and sew down start here and sew down and then flip it over sometimes and sew the rest but it just depends on how I want to do it so I'm going to go ahead and do that with my quarter inch seam and I will be right back okay I am so happy that I did stitch my seams first because when I got to the machine, when I went to this part, there was a little bit of an extra um, fabric. So I did have to stretch it a bit. Now, if I did not do that, this whole thing would have shifted. If I would have started up here and, and kept going, the whole thing would have shifted down. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what that looks like. I learned that tip from Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop, and I think she learned it from Aditya Sitar um, from Laundry Basket Quilts. So here we have wonderful seams. So those seams line up perfectly. If you can see that right there. So I'm happy I did that or else it probably would have shifted. So now I'm gonna give that a press, and what we're gonna do is press open, and then we're going to go ahead and assemble the last part. Okay, now we're gonna take the bottom piece and do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and pin with nesting our seams. I can already tell there's just a tiny bit of fabric there too. So I'm definitely going to stitch at my seams first. Sometimes you can just tell and sometimes that happens, no big deal. Now, if it was a lot of fabric and it would cause some sort of puckering, I definitely would unpick some seams. But for this, it'll be just fine. So I'm just pinning a little bit so it holds it all together. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. Um, I'll, I'll do my seams first and then I will go ahead and stitch it and I'll press it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and pressed that open. So this is what the back looks like. And now we're going to trim the block down, all the excess, and you can see I have a little bit of excess fabric here. We're gonna go ahead and trim that down to be 14 inches square. So something I also do when trimming is, I used to actually just line up a ruler, a square ruler, whatever size it was, and I would cut around it. Then I learned quickly that my points were just getting cut off, just completely. There was no good seam allowance or anything. So what I do now is also recommended by Kimberly is I take a, I do use a longer ruler when I do this, and I line up, I'll try to find a common seam. So you can see that, that would be a common seam. I also align the bottom, and then I wanna make sure that it's all of my points are within the quarter inch seam allowance, which they are. So you can see I have a little bit of excess fabric there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that off. So I know that that part is straight now. And I will do that for all four sides. And I do make sure, I try to look, let's see if you can see that. I try to align it and see like, okay, how much am I off? I'm just off just a little bit. It's a little bit bigger than 14 inches, which happens sometimes, but I just wanna make sure that my, seams my points are not in where I'm cutting again I'm lining up with a common seam I see so that one actually is a little less than a quarter inch but I will adjust that when I sew any blocks together I will just keep note of that sometimes that does happen to me um, occasionally but you know what nothing's perfect and just move on it'll look great in the quilt okay so i just squared up this block i absolutely love how this turned out it is so cute i love the 30s prints i'm so happy i went with scrappy okay we have officially completed the flower block in my new pattern sunflower stand. You can see how just changing the fabrics of the block completely changes the way it looks. I think this block is super cute. I love that I use 1930s inspired reproduction fabrics to make it to give it a more scrappier feel. In my original version, I did use buttercup and slate and I also made it look scrappy. So you don't have to, you can do solid petals, um, solid or, the same fabric of petals you could do solids um make sure you take a look on instagram and facebook for my pattern release teams versions i have about 
15 lovely people on my pattern release team and they all made this quilt and different fabrics and they all look so beautiful. I cannot believe how much just changing the way the fabric is placed or using different types of fabric completely changes this pattern. It is so versatile and it's beautiful. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today and that it is a little more easier for you to make this block. Go ahead and like and subscribe to this video and share with a friend. And also stay tuned for part two of this series where we make the leaf stem block and then, and then where we put it together in the free additional settings crib downloadable PDF on my blog. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.